Now is a good time to talk about the hammer candlestick pattern. Now, theoretically, what this pattern is, is a reversal pattern. That's what you're going to hear if you watch a video or you read uh, an article on this candlestick pattern. You're going to get this image where you got a downward trend and then a candlestick that looks literally like a hammer. The theory is that the trend reverses. So you got a bearish trend and then you see this hammer candlestick pattern and it goes upward. Now the theory isn't 100% correct and if you ever want to know the statistics on a particular candlestick pattern, just go to patternsite.com. You can find the statistics here. So here's the tested performance. This guy ran all these uh, candlestick patterns over a series of past data and he found that that uh, theory that the reversal actually goes um, as planned is only 60% of the time, which is almost random. Now, I actually have run some uh, algorithms myself on hammer candlestick patterns. It's actually pretty easy to program because the candlestick is pretty simple. The idea of the candlestick is simply that you have a long shadow down below and no shadow up top. It can be black, it can be white, it doesn't matter. Now, the theory says it's going to reverse. The statistics say it usually reverses, but it's still kind of random. Um, but what I found is it matters where the candlestick is. So, generally, if you have a hammer candlestick pattern in the middle of a bunch of data, nothing happens. But if you have it at the bottom, the trend often reverses. And then again, and you won't see this um, in this site, if it's at the top of a trend, it could be dangerous, depending on the type of hammer it is. And you see that here. Bear market down breakout gives the best average move, and the best 10-day performance comes from, again, a bear market down breakout. Whereas the bull market up breakout, which is what you see here basically, is um, when you see a likely reversal. So I'm going to show you some examples real quickly. Let's uh, start with Walgreens. And like I said, it matters where the hammer is. So you can see a hammer right here. It's in the middle, right? It doesn't matter because it's in the middle. It doesn't really tell you anything. However, when you see the hammer at the bottom of a trend or the top of a trend, it's meaningful. So we also can move over here where we see this downward trend and then a hammer. That hammer is at the bottom of the trend. Now, if it's at the bottom of the trend, what it really means is that you've got a resistance right at the end of that shadow, or sorry, a support. So the reason it bounces back often is because that candlestick shadow shows you the strength of the bears, the strength of the people selling or shorting the stock. And the strength only goes down here. Well, you know that it's probably going to bounce back. So that's exactly what happened with uh, WBA in this instance. So the psychology of this candlestick pattern is actually pretty simple. It's you've got buying and selling and the selling goes down to a point and then reverses. So if you want to look at an example of trading that ends up as a candlestick pattern after you aggregate it all, all you need to do is look at the SPY over um, Let's look at the, this quarter, because this quarter we had a record comeback. It was the top comeback we've ever seen in the stock market after falling and then rising, as you can see here. Fell to a great degree and then came back. If we shrunk all this data into one candlestick pattern, we would see a hammer. We'd see it starts high, ends high, but the shadow goes way down here. And I actually have that. If you look at the quarterly candlestick patterns for the S&P, this is what we're seeing right now. So this is the quarter that just ended. That data we just saw in the charts right here, this entire set of data, if you shrink it down to one candlestick pattern, you get exactly what we just saw in that image. You get this candlestick right here. Now, like I said, when you see a hammer at the bottom, it indicates a reversal of a bearish trend. But when you see a candlestick at the top, what does it mean? 
Well, usually it doesn't mean much, but if the shadow is very long, it's dangerous because, like I said, that shadow indicates the strength of the bears. The longer it is, the stronger the bears are. Now, what you're looking at are three candlestick patterns that are all hammers. And here is the, see, we're looking at quarterly, right? Here is the market crash, the dot com crash of 2000. We had a quarterly hammer stick candle, and then we had that market crash. This is the market crash of 2008. It all started with this hammer stick pattern, hammer candlestick pattern with a long shadow at the top. And then we went into that reversal. We went into that market crash, that recession. Now we're seeing the same thing. So it's pretty dangerous. And I've been predicting a market crash for a while. Now that we see that the quarter's ended with this candlestick pattern, we're looking pretty dangerous. Now, notice that we are much higher now than we were at the past candle, uh, past two times we saw this candlestick pattern. So we could drop a lot further and it could be a lot worse than 2008 and 2000. But overall, that's the danger of the hammer candlestick pattern at the top of a bullish trend. The top shows you we can't really push that much further. There's a um, difference. So here's the idea. People thought it should start out up here, and then they agreed at the end that it should end up up there. But we also saw the power of the bull, the bears, pushing it downward to a pretty significant low. Now, if you take this as a rule, the low tells us how far it will drop the next time. So you see how um, the next quarter we had a low that was pretty much the same. And then after that, it started to really fall. Um, so this market crash might not be quick. As you can see, the last two, if we're looking at a quarterly basis, the next quarter is going to be more bearish and it will end lower, but it's not going to be that significant until maybe one or two quarters later. And then things get into full bear market mode. So overall, how do you trade such a candlestick? First, you need to recognize where that candlestick is. Um, WBA. Recognize where it is. If it's at the bottom of a trend, then it's likely you're hitting a support level and it's going to bounce upward. But if it's at the top of a trend, you need to pay attention to that shadow. How long is the shadow? If it's very long, you need to be worried about a possible bearish reversal. If it's not long, you don't need to worry so much. You can just ignore that hammer candlestick pattern as if it were in the middle of all this data. Okay, so that's it for the hammer candlestick pattern. And of course, you have the inverse hammer hammer candlestick pattern, which is this one. And it's basically the same thing, just reverse everything. It's the opposite. It's the same thing. It shows you the power of the bulls, not the bears. And it puts a resistance level, not a support level, right above that wick. That's it. Please like this video if this has helped you. If you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comments section below, and I can make a video to answer those questions.